So this is my uh, Polish TP, Polish Lavu with uh, wood stove, Amokan wood stove. And this setup is made for this uh, wood stove and stuff is made for this Lavu. It's going to be good. And for you, uh, for you people who are always are complaining about problems and issues, well, I got this. It's a uh, it's a uh, carbon monoxide. Uh, Warning device, alarm. And I'll put this up here, so so I can show you that this is perfectly safe, even in this little tent. And this will go off uh, if uh, like that, and it will show the value here so this will go off if uh, if it uh, get too bad in here now it's pretty good I can close the door I don't want I don't want this this oven to burn uh, burn like crazy because it's uh, it's getting so hot it's terrible it's uh, it's glowing and the pipe is glowing everything is glowing so it's it gets extremely hot in here so I can't uh, fire it up too much but the big advantage with this uh, this kind of uh, stove or tent experience especially in the winter uh, you are able to dry up your clothes that's something you're not able to if you're uh, if you're uh, in a normal plastic tent without any heat source you you need the heat source and you need the air to uh, ventilate through your tent and uh, that's what called hot tempting and that's um, that's almost a must uh, in the winter if you're staying uh, for many nights in a row because you're even even if you're not wet your sleeping bag will suck moisture every night so more and more and more and and eventually we will be, you will feel it as wet and it will not uh, insulate that well anymore and the same with all your clothes. You're not able to dry them up. In the summer you can dry them up. You can dry your clothes just by wearing them. But uh, not in the winter. Not in snowy winter at least. And for you people concerned about uh, carbon monoxide. It's, uh, it's a danger. It's really dangerous. You can't feel it. Well you can feel it in a way that you feel dizziness. Um, headache and such and it will just go on uh, towards uh, throwing up and stuff like that nausea um, but um, when you sleep you will not you'll not feel that so yes if you don't have good enough ventilation you will have a problem um, with that um, and an oven like this or a stove uh, operates burning wood and sucking the air in to uh, to the stove, burning it and pumping the 
and gases and smoke up uh, through the pipe, stovepipe. So, so it'll make an under pressure in your tent. So if it's too, um, so if it's too uh, dense or uh, closed up without any ventilation, you will get some problems. Yes, you will. But now I'm having this big stove jack. See this uh, stove jack is way bigger than the pipe. So they will come even suck some air from outside in here. Go through the oven, up again, through the pipe. Uh, and it's not even closed uh, through the ends of the tent. It's open underneath. So uh, it's not tight, airtight at all. And you can even feel when it's blowing. You can even feel uh, the air coming through the fabric. So it's not. So it's not a worry. I don't worry about it. So I have this just to brought this now just to prove for you that uh, in a canvas tent it's no problems at all. I've had I don't know maybe not hundred but uh, very many nights in tents like this with. Uh, uh, artificial heating like uh, Hiker 111 wood stove and multi fuel stove uh, using diesel fuel, all that, all that kind of tents. Uh, and it's never been any problem yet. So, well, when that said, um, a fire in a tent is always something you should be concerned about uh, when using open fire. It's uh, it's, I won't call it flammable, but it is, it is, it is burnable, so it's, uh, it's not good if you get a fire. So, as long as you use common sense, it usually goes very well. And I also have uh, a spark arrestor on the top of the pipe to uh, try to eliminate as much uh, as much uh, as sparks as possible so uh, so the tent will not catch fire from the outside especially now I have some uh, some spruce wood firewood in here and that makes a lot of sparks so the spark arrestor is uh, an important thing to have. So uh, shouldn't be shouldn't be a problem. I used it many times in my uh, big level. This pipe and spark arrestor and all kind of woods. I burned all kind of woods in it, and it's uh, I've never had any problem. Never any holes or anything. So it's uh, so it should be good. Well, I brought with me some my spoon carving knife and some pieces of sandpaper. 240, 120, and 1000. So, and this is a piece of yeah, this is birch and. I think I should make a make a teaspoon, small tablespoon for stirring my coffee and stuff. I have bigger spoons already made, so this is a nice piece of grains looking good. So I think this would be good. And yes, I have my first aid kit with me. A teaspoon is like you put your thumb in and you get a good thumb feeling. Should be good. I do the bowl uh, very early in the, uh, in the carving. And, uh, and I f finish it up later, uh, fine-tuning it and, 
and make it straight. So now I have the handle, I might shape the handle a little bit, both ways, this way and, and this way. And it depends a little bit on the wood. And I keep this upper part uh, for a very long time because it's very nice to hold on when I do this, this type of carving, which is very difficult if I remove it. Well, it's on its way, it's coming. Um, I'm going to do a little curve to the handle and pretty flat on the top side and around it on the other side. I have to do a little more carving here and there, fine tuning on the bowl before I cut it off uh, this piece. Um, then I'll be ready to start standing, I guess. Well, the spoon's off and it's time for some fine tuning and and sanding. Let's start with the 120 paper. And when you start sanding you will find high spots and low spots, which you can't sand away, but uh, it's much easier to use your knife and just tweak it a little bit. Well, it's uh, coming. <laughs> it's strange the grains in the wood kind of disappear when sanding it. I have a few issues. Did you see that? But there's a bump here. Uh, I can't remove anymore. It's getting getting very really thin. So these have to be. And I have a little splinter case in the top here but well that will be just for boiling coffee and just to stir the coffee and stuff like that so it feels good pretty good now and it took me about an hour and I don't think I'm gonna do any more to it now I'll leave it take it with me home and do the fine tuning with the thousand grit and if I need that anymore it feels very soft now and do the oiling so that's for that well it's time to make some supper and this is uh, this is my food it's uh, almost like a small figuration it's um, it's something I put together and and made it for uh, for a fishing trips and trips like that. So I have a couple of these laying around, and these start to be really old. It's uh, from 2012, so I have to eat them up. So this is kind of my way of making a figuration or or a meal for 24 hours. It's uh, it's not big. It's only 2,000 calories, so it's not much, but it's something. And if you're interested, I can show you in another video. Just let me know in the comment field, and, and I might might do a video about it. So I'm gonna have one of these today. It's quite good. A little bit cold on my feet, um, even though I have a thick, thick uh, foam foam mat underneath. It's still 
it's still a bit uh, chill, chilly from the ground. But my sleeping bag is good winter bag, so it should be good. I think I am crawling into bed. So, good night. See you tomorrow. Good morning. It's uh, minus two degrees inside and outside. And I just started up the wood stove. Okay, everything packed. My stove, carrying handle, and my backpack with sleeping bag, tent, and everything. Usually, I, <laughs> as usual, I bring with me a bit more than necessary. So, but. If you want to go tenting with a tent, wood stove, everything, it got to be a little bit heavy. That's how it is. <laughs>